Hello, this is Tom. Today I'm going to do a message on uh, Weekly Gospel Reflections. Are you living in the past? Has the past got you chained down? So today we're going to talk about that briefly and uh, talk, uh, talk about how to get away from that. I uh, haven't done a video in a, a while, so today uh, I'm going to do one that uh, I had someone ask me about that. How do you get rid of the past in your life? A subscriber asked me that question, and, uh, you know, I got to thinking about it. Sometimes the past can really chain you down. So do you think of the past all the time? Or are you chained to the past? Is the past, past giving you troubles? where you can't really control what's going on you want to get out of that are things coming up always and you're thinking of the past you may be standing there oh I remember this or it could be a situation that was not pleasant are you always thinking of the past we always tend to think things uh, that happen to us that are bad sometimes we'll think of things that are good the good things in our life but we tend to always think of things in the past so today if you look at Proverbs 4 uh, chapter 4, verse 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. And so we always should always just let the past go. Nothing we can do about the past. It's got us chained down. We can't do anything about it. The best thing to do is go forward in life and not really wor worry too much about the past. There's nothing we can do about it. Do you pretend or you're hiding? We have to get out. God wants you to deal with things in the present and not run. God is saying to you, deal with the things in the past. But there are things sometimes that will happen to you, and you wonder, why is that happening to me? God wants you to see. He knows you can handle any given situation. That's the reason it's put upon you. So what you have to do, you have to deal with it. We cannot live in the past because God is opening the door for our future. If we live in the past all the time, we can't live for the future. So we have to really... Uh, Think of ourselves as always thinking positive toward God, and God is our future. Don't be, you know what, are you scared of your past? Don't be scared of your past. A lot of us sometimes, we do, we get fearful of our past and things happen to us in our past. If you look at Philippines, Philippians 3.12, But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the pride, the praise of the upward call on God and Jesus Christ. God wants you to look forward. He doesn't want you to look in the past. Sometimes maybe it could be what happened to you. Some, sometimes it could be a, a job. It could be your parents. It could be a workplace. It could be a relationship in the past that you're trying to deal with. He wants you to deal toward the future. God always has a plan. Maybe that these issues that are unresolved, you need to take the time and figure out how you're going to resolve them. Maybe God wants you to learn at the present time and learn what happened in the past gives you guidance for the future. So don't think of the past. It gives you guidance for the future. There was a, there was a, a company that I worked for, and um, it was actually a security company. It was not a burglar alarm company. It was a high-end commercial uh, company that just did banks and vaults and high-end commercial accounts. I'd been working there about three years, but there was a colonel that owned the company. He was a colonel. He was a full bird colonel. Big man, just a big man, very intimidating. When he spoke, everybody listened. But he would intimidate everybody, including me, in the office. What would you sell today? Did you do anything today? What did you accomplish? How much sales did you bring in today? And it was this constant pressure. It was a it was a decent job. I mean, I got benefits out of it. I got a I got uh, money for my car and gas and fuel. But it was just a constant pressure on me. At that time, back in the, uh, I would say back uh, when we when I had that job, it was, jobs are hard to find. They were just they were there, but it was hard to find. And for the money I was making, it was okay. It was I, I was sustaining my life. But this guy would intimidate. Every morning I'd get in there at 6.30, and he would be in there, of course, because he'd get in there uh, early, early. 
and became, being a colonel. And would you say, I'll come in here, let's talk to me. And I got to where I'd come in later, but it didn't matter. He always had this goal to pound me, pound me, pound me, pound me. What did you sell? I need to sell today. This guy was a, a millionaire. He made money. He had all the banks locked up in from uh, uh, Florida. Well, really, Central Florida all the way down to Miami. He had a lot of banks that he had locked up doing the cameras and all this high-end security. And he hired me because I had high-end security experience. So finally, one day I walked in. I said, I had enough. I'm not taking this anymore. He had just bombarded me so many times. And what happened? The Lord spoke to me that night and said, do not take it. Go on to your life. Create what you want to do, and I will be with you. I, it was a dream. It was this unbelievable dream. I walked in the office. I felt really good. And I said, you know, he's standing up. And he says, what did you sell today? I said, I did not sell anything yesterday. In fact, you owe me a little over $150,000 in commission. You've not paid me. You will pay me or I will sue you. Then he starts telling me this, that, this, that, this, that. You will not. I said, you pay me my money that's due to me. Or I will sue you. I will take you to court and I will sue you. I want my money. If you cannot pay me the $150,000, I have contracts. I did the court. I did three courthouses. Now, this is fire alarm, car access, cameras, social, uh, CCTV, uh, the walkthrough metal detectors. I did it all. I designed it, did it, the whole nine yards. The guy says, uh, you're fired. I give him my check then. Nope, checks are not made until Monday. You're fired. I said, it's fine. I walked out the door, went down to Office Depot, got my cards, went down, I said, I want, this is my new company name, went in there. I says, I will not steal any of his business. I don't want any of his business because I can get my own. Within an hour, I got a phone, phone call from NASA, Kennedy Space Center. Tom, we need you, we need you, we need you. Well, their, their contracts are with Martin Marietta. They had big companies they were dealing with. I mean, these contracts were, they would have 300 people on a site. And there were some high-end security people. And what they needed me for was my specialty, which was um, perimeter control and things like that. Uh, uh, access, access card, identify, fingerprint access. This one, they didn't have this stuff. This was stuff that I sold that... We're no one in the world was selling this stuff other than high end companies were selling this stuff. So I went in and I I, I I went down there. I was just so excited. I went down there, put in a room. There was like six or seven engineers in the room. Uh, the the guy had an assist in there. I need control on this building. We're getting uh, we're getting. We had the uh, Delta team come in last night and they broke our security. I said it'll never happen again. You have them boys come back in two months. And I will make sure you you will have a good system. So I did, and I designed it. Rest of the story. I got a contract, led to another contract, led to ten more contracts, and I ended up being a company that was huge and large at that particular time. The thing of it is, God had a plan for me. He said, "Take the grief you're getting, get out of that current situation now, because you're to your limit, and I'm afraid you're going to do something that, you're, because I was I was to my I was getting sick." I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I could not take the stress. But I'm a very strong person in general. I can usually take just about anything, even for years, because that's the type of life that I, I lived in, I, because that's the jobs that I had. But God wants you to go forth. He doesn't want you to live too much in the past. You have to have some past experience to go forth into the present experience that you're living in. So, for example, when I decided to move here, I already pretty well knew what, what was going to happen because I had people already living here. And not only that, I expected the worst that would happen. What's the worst that can happen? You know, I come here and I spend my time here in the Philippines. They may or may not like what I have to offer here. If they do not, all I can do is just go back to the States. But the, the, the best thing that I did was I made, before I do something, I think about it. And I pray about it, and I think about it, and I pray about it. And I said, okay, Lord, give me guidance. If I don't hear guidance from you, I will assume that I will wait until I do. And I do, and I wait, even though it's hard for me to wait. It could be a year before I hear back on something. It could be two years. It could be three years. In this case, it was three years because I hated getting that job because I knew it was going to be entailed. But I got paid a salary. I got paid gas. I got a credit card. I had all the things that... Uh, a phone was paid for at that time. 
they were the big luggy phones. There was a phone in the car, but he would pay an X amount of dollars a month for that to help me out. Because as you know, being a salesman, you're only as good as the last sale you do. No matter how many years you've been in a company, it's the same thing in life sometimes. You're only as good at actions that you do at this current time. For example, if you're a person that doesn't wash your dishes after you get up, the Lord wants you to always live a life like Christ, live a life that is fulfilled, keep busy, keep working, keep doing things. And a lot of people don't really realize the Lord is always with you. You may not think he's with you, but he's always with you. If you receive Christ in your heart, God's with you. Sometimes you have to sit here and listen for the Heavenly Father because he will speak to you and you're not listening. If you hear a thought coming into your mind that is actually a positive thought, that's from God. Sometimes you get an idea and say, wow, how come I didn't think of that before? Well, it, it, it came from you, but the Heavenly Father put the seed in your mind to help you think of that thought and actually the Holy Spirit to go forward and do what that is best. I presently look two years for a vehicle, maybe over that three years because we had this car is not working so we started looking for vehicles it took us three years to find something that was affordable for me here living in the philippines and it's very hard because used cars here are hard to find so i asked the lord will you please help me find a car my heavenly father the lord so we can actually go about more and do things because the, the restrictions that are upon us here and it wasn't it it was about from the time I asked him, it was three, I think three years, two years, three years to the date. Uh, he finally uh, said, one day there will be a car for you. And the reason why I say that is, is I was sitting in a chair and I was looking at uh, cars. And I said, these are all just wore out. They're junk. They're junk. Bottom uh, rods, tie rods, uh, brakes, shocks, just, just all junk. Tires. If you buy a tire here, it's bald, you know. And so I'm sitting here and I'm going, okay, uh, okay. And all of a sudden, God says, check out this this website. And the name, this name came in my mind. And it did. And then I bought that car. So the Heavenly Father is always there with you. I know this. I try to keep them short. And I got to talking. And so I want to thank everybody for always watching our videos. And always taking the time to watch our, our videos. And thank you so much. God bless.